The year 1900 showed the other side of industry at the Paris World's Fair. As the people of Georgia shared in W.E.B. Du Bois's gold medal win under the Eiffel Tower. His name is pronounced American style like Du Bois. He was born in 1868 in the Massachusetts town of Great Barrington. Du Bois began to realize some people saw him in a different way because he was black. As a student, his determination makes him a model we could all copy. His first higher school was in Nashville called Fisk, one of several special schools with black students and black teachers. This was further south than where he grew up with much more farming. Society had a system Du Bois believed was wrong because it made him and other black people into a problem, a social problem. He knew better and as a young man embraced the cause of science to prove his point. With photographs and data in 1900, that were made by many under his leadership. He strove to show the blackness and humanity that people he worked with in Georgia lived in their daily lives. This was a new view. Visitors at the fair loved his work because they thought it was a big surprise. After graduating Fisk in 1888, Du Bois started the same higher degree all over again at Harvard in Boston. The oldest school of its kind in America, Harvard was the big leagues. After graduating in 1890, he began a year of higher, higher study. Meanwhile, in London, England, a remarkable series of books began to come out showing where workers lived in the city and how their lives should be improved. Ellen Swallow had worked with maps and a remarkable group of women in Chicago included Vassar grad Julia Lathrop, who made friends with Swallow. Led by Jane Adams, these women met with Swallow when she traveled to the 1893 World's Fair. The city of Chicago was becoming a great lab for the study of how people lived in cities. In a grand building called Hull House, these women did work and made maps published in 1895 to Cheers. This was a new way to study people, and W.E.B. Du Bois was in it early on. From 1892 to 1894, Du Bois studied in Germany's city of Berlin at the school of that name. Like Mary Watson Whitney, this was his opportunity to study abroad. He did great. His main teacher was Gustav von Schmoller who taught that the cause of scientific truth studying society was in the details. Von Schmaler did not like grand sweeping theories that were not based on data that had been collected in the scientific spirit. If Du Bois had a little more money, Berlin was ready to give him a higher, higher degree, but he needed to come back to America and began teaching at a school named after William Wilberforce in 1894. While he taught, he finished his higher, higher degree at Harvard as a student. In 1895, Jane Addams Chicago book came out. That same year, 
Du Bois became the first black man to receive a higher higher degree from Harvard. While he knew more about collecting and analyzing social data than almost anyone in the U.S., the only schools that would give him a job as a teacher were for black students. In 1896, Du Bois took a non-teaching job as an assistant at the Pennsylvania School of Higher Study in Philadelphia. Like Ellen Swallow stepping forward to be a bit of an experiment herself, Du Bois got to work showing why he got his science education in the first place. The idea was to make a broad study of black people in Philadelphia, and he had one year to do it. He even had help from one of the Chicago Hull House team to interview ladies. After finishing the research in 1897, he moved up to his final job as a social scientist at the Atlanta School of Higher Study for Black Students in the city of that name in Georgia. This is where he began the work he had to show in Paris. Du Bois belongs in this history especially because he knew how to look at himself in new ways. If he was not the problem, then what was the problem? As a late Victorian man, a bit stuffy and elegant, he refused to be told who he was, what he was, or what he could do if he tried. He had to reach for a new ability to see himself, to see his value and the value of other people, like a scientist. When solving problems in school yourself someday, you will want to remember Du Bois and let your mind look at you, working away at it, asking questions in new ways can make problems go away. So if school makes you work on problems, keep a good attitude and think. Ooh, if you get pent up, do not stop, but let your mind see what you are working on. Letting yourself see how you think while you think can be the perfect way to make problems go away in science. This is a habit even a young child might be told to own if they can. In 1897, Du Bois wrote of Strivings, the beginning of his soul's book to come, where he first undid the problem of not being a problem that someone thinks is a problem. Published in the Atlantic magazine, it was the first time he wrote for readers outside social science. His new job at Atlanta gave him access to students he could train to do work. He also held an annual conference. The black schools Hampton and Tuskegee had similar programs collecting annual data. But Du Bois used his Berlin skills and followed his own model. Later on, Chicago's Jane Addams came to these conferences too. An 1898 study of Farmville, Virginia was followed by the 1899 publication of Du Bois's broad study on black people in Philadelphia. Nothing like it had ever been seen before or done before. He believed he was doing science to show the world his people were people in every full sense. The Paris show was accompanied by hundreds of photographs. Black faces that felt good about being in front of the camera because this was a group activity. A network of friendly people feeling connected to each other as people, which showed on their faces. 
The data Du Bois showed in charts included Africa, the source of blackness, as well as the industrial progress black people in Georgia had made over the past 30 years. Hampton and Tuskegee were also in the booth, but Du Bois and his helpers' work were luminous and surprising. He won a gold medal for bringing it together. This stuffy late Victorian, known for his gloves and cane, a glow beneath the Eiffel Tower in 1900, wearing his top hat. He told the story of people, as people, with data and colors and photographs. This was the World's Fair, where the first movies with sound were ever shown instead of movies with no sound. Du Bois started a century of visual storytelling off right with his science display. After the jury judged the booth, more things were added. The laws of Georgia about black people. Hundreds of books by black writers. Hundreds of black patents for inventions filed with the government. Patent paperwork was the first job Einstein got stuck in for a while. The year 1900 also saw Du Bois help lead the first Pan-African Conference in London, beginning work toward the goal of broad self-government by the people of Africa. He also was elected a member of the American Association for the Advancement of Science. Du Bois was a young black social scientist who made his point with the world as his audience. His point about people and what they can do given the chance set the tone for the century to come. That point still stands today, just like the Eiffel Tower. Although he left Atlanta and science in 1910, Du Bois's sight and words are clear and basically all accurate today. If what you say as a child doing science stands up so well a century later, you would be very proud. Meanwhile, under skillful microscopes, New discoveries broke through. These were more genuinely helpful for Darwin's theories than previous ideas Du Bois countered. One of the leaders of this good research was a child of Kentucky, educated at Johns Hopkins, Thomas Hunt Morgan. There were others that year too. They studied flies. In 1900, Mendel's work with pea seeds became well known, and several teams of scientists started to study what it is about flies that makes them the way they are. Soon, Morgan and others would learn where the data for these possible insect shapes came from. The parts of the fly that could be understood as if they were little machines, received their identities from a small part of living cells known to be central and colorful. These little libraries of life have a shape that might make you think of a braid of hair, and these can be colored to stand out from their background on a slide under a microscope. This was a really helpful answer that led to a century full of scientific and medical breakthroughs. While the past still skews science teams white, and the world waits for more breakthrough black scientific leaders, the bigger challenge is not society putting obstacles in the way. W.E.B. Du Bois, like Ellen Swallow, was an unstoppable learner a student 
and a researcher who became an early leader. Reality is the greater challenge, and the reward is to better understand it by appreciating science and doing it.